There are certain skills that you need to possess, whether at a professional level or at a personal level. And one of them is plumbing. Plumbing actually affects your day-to-day -day life, whether you realize it or not. If you're an engineer, an aspiring plumber, a technician, someone working in the construction, contracting, maintenance fields, or not, you need to have a clear idea how plumbing systems work, even at a basics level. In this current video, I'll be providing you with an exclusive lecture, free lesson completely from our premium plumbing engineering course, which has been getting a lot of hype from a lot of professionals, thousands of professionals across the globe from over 175 countries who have witnessed the educational and professional development excellence that the program has helped them with. Whether at a professional level, at a development level, you were able to acquire years worth of expertise packed in a full-on comprehensive course such that you'll be learning the ground zero, the basics, all the way to becoming a professional in the plumbing domain. And once you're done with the program, you'll be provided with an exclusive completion certificate from our globally recognized uh, programs and academy and company, which will help you showcase your skills as a professional who has learned about plumbing, plumbing engineering, how the systems work, how are they designed, and much more. The components, the design sequence, the steps, everything will be packed in such a powerful compact course attended by thousands of professionals just like yourself. The details are provided in the video description. Feel free to pause the current video, take a look at them, take a look at the uh, course page to learn more about the uh, quality that you'll be getting, the actual savings that you'll be having, and the value you will be provided by going through such a powerful compact course walking through the same footsteps that other professionals just like yourself in the same position, having no idea about plumbing engineering, plumbing design, no idea whatsoever. By the end of the program, they have become full on professionals, proficient, such that when they're applying for a certain job, they're transitioning to a different industry or they're working on their own plumbing systems, they have been provided with the expertise that bridge the gap between theory and the application and equipping them with the skills which are in demand by the market. So let's transition to the current lecture and truly hope that you find it helpful. It helped you get some inspiration and some ideas about the entire plumbing engineering and the plumbing practice as a whole. That way you have a clear step forward in terms of your own development journey. And this lesson is free and complimentary lesson. Once you are done, like I mentioned, take a look at the video description. We've got for you some important details which will help you save cost save time, save effort, and acquire years worth of expertise and knowledge that will help you excel and take your professional development to a whole new level. Welcome back to the segment of the course in which we are going to examine the design sequence for a water supply system. Now, these are the general steps that you need to follow, the general milestones in order to successfully design a water supply system which maps to any project that you have whether it's a commercial project or residential project or a villa or an apartment irrespectively these are the key steps that you need to follow in order to ensure that you are on the way to a successful properly designed water supply system first of all you need to establish what are the total demand requirements to be supplied this is step number one in which you are going to examine what is the water supply demand for that application? Nothing to worry about. We're going to have a detailed step-by-step -step example to show you how to design and size a water supply system in addition to the tools that you need to have, in addition to the methodology and the essential knowledge which will help you mold these steps to fit the requirements for your current project. We got you covered. There's nothing to worry about. At this current stage, we are walking you through the sequence of steps. First of all, we determine the total demand requirements for our application. What is the amount of water supply, specifically cold water, hot water, that should be supplied to our application, whether it's a building or compound, a villa, whatever it is. There should be a certain calculation that we need to follow in order to get the amount of water that we need to be supplied then we're going to be sizing the pipes we're going to have a reversed approach for example we determine how much water that we need to be delivered at a certain point and from that point we work our way backwards in which we are going to determine the pipe sizing for the branches segments main lines various sections of our water supply distribution network once these are done we are going to have two activities which happen in parallel or consecutively and simultaneously 
either we could start with one of them, at this, both of them at the same time, or either one of them, and then we transition to the next. If you have a team of designers or an engineer, you can just simply split the task between both. So we could size the tanks and the water heater. For example, if you do have a building, you need to have, and you're supplying water, hot water, obviously you need water heaters. So you need to size those. And you need to size the tanks for the collection of the water. We're going to have more detailed discussion and calculations how to do so. And then the pump sizing. If you notice, we do have in the red descriptor, we have depends on the design requirements. Why? <clears throat> Since water supply is quite dynamic, the design process is literally versatile. Every single application could have multiple approaches to designing the water supply system. Um, the designers could actually argue in terms of the best approach and documenting a step-by-step -step guide that could work to any, any project is not going to be quite practical because every single project is quite unique and special by itself. And we've seen this hands-on in multiple projects. But in order to be able to to successfully design the water supply system, you need to have the essential knowledge, the technicalities, the practices. What are the things that we're trying to achieve in order for you to be able to tailor them to your own practical project design requirements? And this is what we're going to be helping you with, in addition to a step-by-step -step, uh, process to help you apply it to your own uh, requirements. So back to the pump sizing, depends on the design requirements. Some applications, you don't need to have a pump, while other applications, you do need to have a pump. And other applications, you need to have two different pumps addressing two different segments of your network. What does that mean? How does that look like? Like I've mentioned, there's nothing to worry about. We're going to provide you with the full knowledge, the full background to help you tackle any project that comes along. So let's recap the steps. First of all, we need to determine the total amount of water required to be supplied, both hot water and cold water. Then we're going to be sizing our network to distribute that water to our units and fixtures. Then we're going to be sizing the tanks, the heaters, and the pumps, either consecutively or simultaneously, or both of them at the same time if you have a team working on that, keeping in mind that the pump sizing depends on the design requirements. If you live in a village, for example, you're able to get the water supplied to your network without using a pump. But in a city and a modern building, for example, often it's going to be rejected from uh, governing bodies that to have a, a facility which is not supplied or does not have a pumping ability to supply pressurized water. So it depends on a case-by-case -case basis, but these are the generic steps that you need to follow in sequence in order to successfully design a water supply system. So what do you think? I truly hope that you found the lecture quite helpful. Feel free to take a look at the video description and smash and destroy the like and the subscribe button. I got for you some important details in the video description about the course, the links to the actual full on program, which will help you get on some information and premium quality knowledge that you will not find elsewhere taught to you by actual engineers, professionals who have worked in such a field. And by the end of the course, you will be provided with an exclusive completion certificate to showcase your expertise, such that when you're applying for a job or you're adding something to your resume, you got the validation to confirm that you have went through the program and you're able to apply these practices to your own career and your professional development. Make sure that you smash the like and the subscribe button to join our global community of professionals just like yourself. And feel free to create a free account on our academy for the latest releases and updates and i'll see you in the next lesson